I finished my coat. I'm really happy with it too. So this is my finished Sew Over It Chloe coat that I started um, to review last week and it's all finished, I'll let you see. So I've got this gorgeous um, satin backed crepe lining, I've got a navy blue zip, I've it's fully lined as you can see. Um, the only alterations I made were, um, I sewed the size 12, if you remember I made a 12 and a 14 that was too big last week. So I think it's quite a generous fitting coat. Um, so alterations wise, I added two, length, uh, two inches to the sleeve length, um, which I often do because I've got long arms. Uh, I kept the length of the coat the same, you can just about see there. Um, which was fine. The pockets are in just the right place, uh, not too high, not too low. And I'll do it up and the zip finishes nicely. And you can see there's a, a little line of top stitching there which keeps the zip in place. So yeah, really, really happy with it. I'll pop some pictures of me in this outside so you can get a better um, idea. It's a little bit dark in here today. So there you go. So time wise, um, it was quite labour intensive this project, um, but as often is with PDFs, it took longer to cut out the pattern than to get going with the sewing part. So once you've got all the pieces cut out, which um, the reason it's such a big PDF is because it's got separate pattern pieces for the lining and also the interfacing so it's quite handy not to have to double up on just one piece so you literally just follow the instructions cut out the lining parts the interfacing parts and your outer parts so once they're all prepped and then your interfacing's ironed on then you can get um, going with the good bit the sewing part which didn't actually take me that long I think I probably spent a couple of afternoons doing the prep and then a couple of afternoons maybe slightly longer um, finishing the actual coat itself so as you can see uh, as I've mentioned before it's a furnishing fabric which I'm a little bit tentative about because I this is I can't put this in the washing machine really um, I could if it was a cushion but I, I think it probably would shrink and lose its um, crispness so I'm going to have to be very careful with it um, but as a summer spring coat I'm, I'm overjoyed I love this pastel um, kind of effect of the pale blue and the cream uh, and I think it's handy for this this time of year where the weather's changing a lot um, so yeah really really pleased with it um, cost wise um, the outer fabric was £10 a metre and I only bought two and a half metres, which was very touch and go as to whether or not I'd fit all the pieces in. I just managed it. So if you do sew this yourself, buy three metres, um, you'll definitely use most of it. Um, lining, um, that was a satin backed crepe. Uh, I think it was about three pounds a metre. I bought it in the sale ages ago. Um, so I didn't buy it for this project and it just works really well. Um, it's quite nice having the the satiny lining and with it being a crepe on the back it's a little bit stronger than kind of an acetate or a silky satin so I'm pleased about that because it needed a little something a little bit more sturdy. Um, the zip, um, I actually put in a zip that was two inches longer than required so I think you were asked to do a 22 inch zip and I, I bought a 24 only because they didn't have one in the shop that I was in. Um, and that was, uh, it was about five pounds in the high street. So overall, I think it came in with a little bit of inter interfacing, it came in to just under 40 pounds, um, which is not bad um, to say that you've got a bespoke made coat. This is the best fitting coat I've ever had. I usually buy them too big just to get the sleeve length. Um, so it's really nice to have something that actually fits well. Um, so yeah, next um, time I'm going to um, keep everything the same but I'm going to sew it in the uh, Melton wool that I showed you last week. So I'm going to do that over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to take my time because I'm quite conscious that it's warming up outside and I want to crack on with my summer wardrobe. Because I'm a bit PDF'd out, I've bought an actual um, couple of Tilly in the Buttons Act 
actual patterns. I've not bought proper patterns for ages. I tend to download them. So it'll be a real joy um, sewing these up. So first one, I've bought the Bettine. I must be the only person in the world that's not made this yet. So um, I really wanted something light um, that I could turn this amazing viscose in to a dress with. So this is absolutely beautiful. It's, it feels very cool to the touch because it's so drapey. And I wanted something that I could wear on a really hot day that I could just throw on. Now, I don't usually like wearing um, an elasticated waist. If you can see from here, um, the bateen has a, an elasticated um, waist section. So what I'm gonna do, I think I might um, put some draw um, ties in, some draw strings instead. So I'll make a couple of little buttonholes for that to happen. It's a bit like the top of a um, pyjama bottoms. So I'm gonna have a bash at that because I like a flatter um, finish around my waist. I really don't like it bunched up. I don't think it's as flattering on me because I'm a little bit curvier. Um, I think it's fine if you're really slim. Um, so I'm gonna have a go at keeping that um, that waistline as flat as I can. So that'll be interesting. And I don't think it's a long make this. So again, after my coat and the time it takes, it's nice to treat yourself to a, a quick make. Um, I don't think I'm gonna put the sleeve tabs on. Um, I'm gonna keep it simple because the pattern is quite busy and I don't think it needs any more detail. If I was sewing it in a plain fabric, <coughs> excuse me, then I would probably put the tabs on. So yeah, we'll see how I get on with that. Hopefully I'll have that by next week to show you. And the other pattern that I bought from Tilly and the Buttons is the Agnes top again. Um, I've not uh, sewn this yet and it's very me because I love a stripy press on top. Um, I can't decide which one to make so I might make both. So there's one, I'll put a picture here with the gathered sleeve and there's also one with a gathered front. Um, they're both lovely. I'm tempted to put gathered sleeves and a gathered front on one, but it's probably a bit much, so I might just do one of each. And the fabric I've got for that is this beautiful viscose jersey. Now, I bought this a while back um, when I was making the molly top um, from Sew Over It, and I made the molly top in a slightly wider stripe, um, actually from them, actually, from Sew Over It themselves. This um, I bought online. I can't remember where I bought it, but I'll pop the link in the description below. And it's beautiful. The quality is absolutely gorgeous. And I've got a couple of meters, so let's see how much I need here. Um, yeah, meter and a half. Okay, so I'll probably get one one top out of it, and I might make mix and match some of my other fabric to finish off the arms or. I'll see how that goes. Okay, so that's me for this week, uh, nice and quick. So next week, hopefully I'll have one or both of those, um, that top and address to show you from Tilly and the Buttons, and a bit more progress on my winter Chloe, um, which I'm excited to make. I'm going to line that in a black satin uh, with a black zip to go with my nice camel Melton wool. So I think that'll be one of those things that goes with everything. So fingers crossed that'll go well. Um, good luck with yours if you're uh, starting to make the Chloe coat. I know Amanda from I Sew A Lot has just started hers, so I'll pop a link to her channel below. She's brilliant, so go and check her review out when it comes along. I don't think she's finished it yet, so keep an eye out for that. And look at her other posts as well, she's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for watching me and all your great comments and your kind subscribing. Thank you very much, appreciate it. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.